Hey guys, welcome back. Carter Bits be tripping. Got a real quick one for you today. We're going to talk to what people have been asking. I'm, I'm answering the crowd on this one. What are you guys going to do when ETH moves over to 2.0? So what does the GPU mining scene actually go to? What are they going to, what are you guys going to put your mining hash rate to? And how do you determine that? So what I'm going to try to do is front run that a little bit and go through a model that I've been working with you guys. The, over the last few months, we're doing a big update to that model to take a snapshot right now of where Ethereum's network is sitting at about 630 terahash. Now, that from the last time the model was there, we were at about almost 400 terahash. So we've almost doubled in size. It's, it's getting there once it hits about 700 terahash. And what are we going to do? with all that hash rate when it comes to the GPU mining scene. So I'm gonna take you guys through a couple different options right now and set you up for the crypto mining model that's gonna be released tomorrow on tomorrow's video where we're gonna go through the more details of where these numbers come from. But I'm gonna give you guys kind of a, a quick one on what's going on with that video. So before we jump right into that one, I got to do a shout out today. I got about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago from GPURisers.com. They had sent me over some risers. You know, I've seen them on Red Panda Mining and we got some cool detail shots here to show you guys these newer risers. Anybody that is still on the fence if they were going to get into mining and they're looking for hardware. Again, this is a shameless plug for them. This is not sponsored content. They just dropped me some risers to say, hey, thanks for doing what you do for the community. There is no sponsor links on this. There's no affiliate links or anything like that. I'm just giving those guys a shout out for sending some risers over. We're going to test these with some 3070 TIs and 3080 TIs when they come in. We're going to get some of those ordered for you guys. So we will show you guys what performance of these risers are and may even front run a, a build of some of the GPUs that we have here with these to give you guys some kind of spec in comparison to other risers and just the ease of use of these. So quick shout out to those guys. Thanks again for sending those risers over. The links are in the description below. All right, let's get right back into this. So the Ethereum network hash rate setting at about 608 terahash. And when we go and look at that comparable to the last week, we see a drawdown from about three, 630 total terahash down by almost 25 terahash. Now that's quite a bit of terahash that has been pulled back off. And we can see this as part of the mining rigs being turned off the world with the price coming back down from 4,000 to 2,500. It also could be what's going on with China where certain mining farms are starting to shut down to move. So we start to see this tail off. The hash rate is reciprocating as we expected. Looking at other networks real quick, we're seeing the same kind of effect. We look at Ravencoin. Ravencoin's really pulled back in price and we're seeing about five terahash total network. And this is from a peak of about 11. So it's down down about 60% when it comes to total network hash rate, which when you look at its peak of around 27 cents to 25 cents, and now back down to you know below 10 cents, this is really reciprocal of those networks pulling back according to price, right? And Ethereum Classic, as it's been holding pretty well at about $75 right now, still is retaining its about 26 terahash and total network down from its peak of about 33 terahash when it went over $175 there for a brief period. So so well, the reason why I'm telling you these terahash to their effects and pullback when you have price pullback is kind of what is going to occur when we look at the merge, when we look at that you won't have anything to mine when it comes to Ethereum, but where does that hash rate go? And it really comes back down to price performance of a particular you know, currency, be that Ethereum Classic, be that Ravencoin, be that Conflux, you name it any of the GPU mineable coins, and we'll go through a list of them on the mining model with you guys. Where is this going to go? And what is the price that's going to need to be required to support that network? And that's really gets down to the meat of what the model is going to show you guys. Is I'm giving you this video today to kind of set it up. And then when we get into the model, you'll have an understanding of what you're looking at. So the way we're going to ascertain the structure of what does 600 terahash equal, I'm going to have that divided out by GPU type. Right. So we can't make a safe assumption that the mix of the amount of GPUs, the types of GPUs are what they are. But we can do a conversion of saying if there's a million 
of the 3080s out there, how much does a 3080 mine on F hash? How much does an RX 480 mine on F hash? How much do the different mixes have? So you're going to have a spread and a mix, and you'll be able to see the toggles that I have set up in there. And then you can make your own assumptions of what you think the network size is based on that. And then we're going to have a size of pi off to the side of that, which is going to show the total potential hash power coming from GPU and ASICs. Now I'm going to dial this in right now, just from what I've seen in the industry and then what we've known is available through the batch numbers that have been produced. We're going to put it at about 45% total hash rate on Ethereum is ASICs. And you know, there could be speculation that it could be as high as 60, but that gives us the size of pi amount of GPU potential hash power that could be moving to these other networks. Now, some GPUs perform a little better on particular algorithms than others when I'm talking an NVIDIA product versus an AMD product. And that's going to be also signified as part of the model that shows if we're looking at something like Conflux or we're looking at something like Ravencoin that really kind of lean into the NVIDIA brands, or we look it back into like ETC cash or Ubicoin, those sorts of uh, hash rates that really are okay with AMD and AMDs perform very well on those networks to where, we're, where, where does that hash rate division come from? Where's What's the algebra that's involved in that? So I wanna make sure that it's very clear and concise for you guys to show that where the data is coming from on those models. And then we can see, that's going to be our size of pi that's going to come over to these networks. So if we have a spread of a portion coming over to ETH, Ethereum Classic, and then we have some coming over to Ravencoin, some coming over to Confluence, we're going to, or Conflux, we're going to see what's the price have to be to be able to absorb certain percentages of the Ethereum network. So there's going to be an actual current, which is what we're looking at right now. And then there's going to be a future prediction that I'm going to have in this model of where I think that where that goes and then what is the percentage of mix that ends up not being you know the people are going to just power off or turn off their their cards right what's the percentage of that that ends up getting turned off and you'll see where you can absorb or what you price wise you would need to absorb all of the ethereum hash rate and then you'll see with like let's just say 50 percent moves over and then 50 percent of you out there have to turn off your rigs because your kilowatt per hour is too high and we're back into like what would be equivalent to the old bear market back in 2019 where there was only the folks that had the best power cost and already had sunk cost in their GPUs where they already owned them were the folks that were actually mining with. So I'm going to try to make it as comprehensive as possible when we go through the model. We almost have that model completely done and I want to be able to go through that in detail with you guys. So this video is really setting that up, but I wanted to give you some context of how the numbers are coming together on that and what we're really looking at from a standpoint that if this happens in December, what are these different price mixtures that we're going to have to have on these other cryptocurrencies to be able to absorb that. I do want to put out a disclaimer out there. I do not think that the hash rate completely predicts price. That's never been the case. Uh, you will see all the time where price will just go way, way up and then hash rate follows that. That's a factual thing. If there's an ability to make money on a particular network, hash rate will grow as we've seen with Ethereum's network going from 250 terahash at the beginning of the year all the way up to 630 terahash just a few days ago. That has followed the price. And as prices went started to come back down, we've also seen a reduction in total hash rate. There's certain other aspects that could be occurring with regards to China, as we've said before, shutting down some rigs, but by and large, it follows price. However, there is this unique period uh, from being a miner for a long time that you have when there's a front running of hash to a particular network and then there's a lot of signal that comes from that so when you have a, a massive amount of hash power start to go onto a network ahead of price there's discussion of well why is this happening is something about to occur on this network and somebody knows something and sometimes it's just a speculative play for somebody and somebody starts to front run that hash rate but by and large they got to pay for their costs so it, it's it's a, a much higher risk for somebody to do that. But if we start to see as Ethereum powers down to go to proof of stake, we see some of this kind of start to be unprofitable for people, but people are taking the speculation ahead of it to try to get yield before the hash rate really starts to come up. You will have some people start to navigate over, which makes it look like it's a lot less profitable scenario. But what's happening is, is the yields are lower and they are the yields are higher for folks that are doing that. And what they're anticipating is that the price 
price is going to jump. We've seen that a little bit with Ethereum Classic where its, its hash rate started moving up from about eight tear hash up to 10 before price really moved all that much. And so the folks that were getting it at 10 tera hash were getting a lot more yield. And then lo and behold, the price goes up quite a bit. Uh, you know, went from $20 there for a bit. It was about anywhere from 15 to $20 all the way up to $175. Those folks are reaping the benefits of getting a lot more yield early. So we may start to see some of this, the shedding of hash power just before the ETH merge looks like it's about to go in. That's another indicator I want to be aware of when you start looking at front running of hash rate onto networks before the price is really followed yet. So there is going to be a lot on this particular topic, but this is the start of that topic. Hopefully this was a real quick video for you guys to understand what the model is going to be producing for you guys and understanding on how hash rate moves around with the, the current setup here. Like, subscribe, share. Make sure you guys follow me. We're going to be doing live streams again out on Twitch and Twitch only on a lot of the larger format live streams. We're going to be doing some testing on this Alienware Area 51 um, new uh, laptop. This is my new render box, but we're going to do some full on testing, crypto testing on it. Um, you know, coming up, we'll do that testing live live streamed on Twitch. And then you guys will have a recap video on YouTube, kind of giving you the stats and highlights of this particular build of this laptop. And we also have a few new GPUs coming in and possibly some of the CXP mining edition ones. I've had somebody reach out and asked if I wanted to do some testing on them, which I obviously do. And we'll have that though. That live stream testing will be done on Twitch. So if you don't follow me on Twitch, you should go out there and follow me on Twitch. And then we'll do recaps on YouTube for you guys. So again, like, subscribe, share, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.